Are your videos boring? I produce 20 how-to YouTube channels, and by its nature, how-to content isn't that exciting. I'm gonna share several things that you can do to spice up your videos and make them a lot more enjoyable. Are you ready? All right, I've got 10 ideas for you. Let's start with number one. One idea that I got from watching the channel Veritasium, which was filmed in multiple locations, is I wonder if when we film in bulk or film in batches, that we could do multiple locations. This video, I did an intro and the outro different, but some episodes you'll see me change locations and change outfits all throughout the video. The reason for going through the trouble to do something like that is it re-engages people, it keeps things interesting. So this is a strategy that I have a love-hate relationship with because I actually love how the videos turn out when you do the multiple location strategy. But I'll admit, that's what I'm doing today, but I'm only filming 10 episodes, and that's hard for me to admit because I've been so used to filming 20 episodes in a day. It takes longer for me to organize my content and the transitions between each little segment are harder for me to wrap my head around. And so it takes a full day just to do 10 episodes when again, normally I could do 20. I have a video where I talk a lot more in depth on my multi-location strategy and I'll link to it right up there if you'd like to know more. Okay, the second idea I have for you is to share stories. You've heard this before. They create engagement. They really build connection with the audience. People wanna know how the story ends. Often when I'm filming with my clients and they're just sharing their advice or they're listing the steps, like this is one, this is step two, this is step three. And they're wondering how can I make my video a little bit longer? A story works great because no matter where you are in the video, when you start into a story, it grabs people's attention. People tend to lean in more. A couple of the episodes that I filmed today were behind the scenes. And I know I personally love being taken behind the scenes to really get the inside scoop. And so that's something that you can do instead of just filming everything on a flip chart like this, you can take them behind the scenes. Now with the type of content that I film and help my clients with how to content, it's really important that we have a solid intro. So with an intro, I always like to include two ingredients, the what, and the why. So the what is typically the title because we do keyword research to find out what's the question we're gonna answer. We say, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to get rid of strep throat without antibiotics. Okay, but then we give a why. Why should they watch? Well, I've been using this remedy for many, many years and it really works. You probably have these ingredients in your kitchen. All right, so now I just gave a why they should watch that hopefully creates some curiosity. So talk about the what and the why right at the beginning of your episode. Okay, number five is to set some content hooks. Now, what do we mean by content hooks? Let's just use the same example I used about how to get rid of strep throat without antibiotics. If I were diving into the content, this is how that might look. Okay, as we dive into this subject of how to get rid of strep throat without antibiotics, first we're gonna be talking about why not antibiotics. And there's some good reasons why you might wanna consider an alternative. Then we're gonna be talking about three ingredients and how each one is a natural antibacterial and a natural antiviral. And you probably have these ingredients in your kitchen. Well, then we're gonna go into the kitchen. I'm gonna show you how to make this, how to take this. And then I'm gonna wrap up the episode with a story about my son when he was really young. He had strep throat, he had a high fever, and we use this remedy. He also had a side effect that you're gonna to wanna to know about because I bet you'll experience that side effect as well. Okay, so that's probably the best example I could give you of content hooks. I didn't give away any of the secrets. You don't know what the ingredients are, but my aim is that I created curiosity all along the way as I told you I'm gonna talk about this, and then this, and then this, and I'm gonna wrap up the video with this. Okay, so that's the goal of content hooks. Right when you dive into your content, I recommend setting those content hooks. All right, number six, no review. Okay, what do I mean by that? I actually learned this from Grant Thompson, who is the creator of the channel King of Random. He passed away a year and a half ago. He was looking in the analytics and at a certain point at every video, there was a drop off. And when he checked to see what was happening, that's when he went back and reviewed. He would say, well, now let's discuss what happened or let's talk about what we did here today. And on YouTube, I guess people just don't like that. If they wanna rewind and review something, it's really easy just to hit the back button. So that's a lesson that you can take home. If you're doing a review in your videos, just go ahead and eliminate that, and that can help improve the performance of your video. All right, number seven is a good one, show them. And this is something that I tend to be weak at. Like I often talk about things, but showing them is better. For example, one of the other episodes I filmed today was the lights. And instead of just talking about the lights, we actually set them up while the camera was rolling and talked about how to use them. And that's my effort to do this step better. And I bet you're wondering what the last one is. 
Idea number eight to make your videos better is to tighten things up. So this happens in the editing. You don't have to worry about it in filming. You can mess up, you can pause, take as many breaks as you want. But in editing, try and tighten things up. Cut out things that are redundant. You can edit out your ums and your uhs. Jump cuts, those are acceptable on YouTube. And another trick, you can try a crop edit. It's like you zoom in a little bit so people won't even know that you edited something out. So if you have a 15 minute video and let's say you can tighten it up down to a 12 and a half minute video, you're more likely that people are gonna watch all the way to the end. Did you know that search engine optimization has completely changed? Yeah, website SEO is dead. You really need to watch my next video. I'll link to it right there. I share a strategy where you can use videos instead of your website to really get results. You need to watch that video unless you wanna be stuck in the past without results.